University of Maryland, Baltimore County for this program of In the Loop. My name is Caitlin Leiter-Mason, a senior here at UMBC. Hi, I'm Ganesh Mysore and I'm a junior here at UMBC. Uh, today we're going to be talking about breaking ground, which is uh, this idea at UMBC that, you know, higher education need not necessarily be just about, you know, giving students uh, the skills they need to succeed in their you know, chosen degree programs, but also that higher education should be preparing students for life as citizens, you know, being uh, civically engaged in their communities and teaching students that they have the power to shape the environment and the communities in which they live. So today we're talking to Provost Philip Rouse about his involvement in Breaking Ground. So you've been a big supporter for, of Breaking Ground. Have there been any experiences in your education or career that led you to become such a big supporter of this idea? Well, I think um, I can share with you one of the experiences that I had actually when I was, was much younger than I am today. Um, I was very fortunate. Um, I obviously grew up in the UK, and I spent some time at Cambridge. Um, and there's something very interesting uh, about Cambridge, um, which is that um, both Oxford and Cambridge, actually, are universities that are completely embedded in the middle of a town and city. And so if you walk through the streets of Cambridge, what you see are um, uh, regular road shops, supermarkets, and then in between those places are the colleges. Um, and in fact, what you would see, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with this, what you would see is a door that enters to the college. Often that door is closed. It might have a little hatch in it that you can walk through. And your experience when you walk across that threshold from the town and into the, into the, um, into the college, of course, it's a very beautiful experience. You walk from a busy town street uh, into this quiet, isolated place. And, um, of course, as I said, it's very beautiful. But there's something very interesting about it, which is that the architecture itself is designed to isolate the academy uh, from the community that surrounds it. And um, I think that, although I didn't think it at the time, I think as I've thought back on that experience, that's really guided me in thinking about um, the way that universities um, should work with the community and the importance of what we might traditionally call civic engagement, but it's so much more the importance of that to the fundamental mission of what we are doing as a great university. With that in mind then, I guess my question is, do you think there's anything in particular about UMBC that makes it such a supportive environment for programs like Breaking Ground, for ideas like these? Well, I think there are a variety of, of, of reasons. Um, probably the basic, most basic reason is that as faculty, staff, and students, we really care. Uh, we care about a university. Uh, we care about each other. We're a community, a very strong community ourselves. And so I think the concept of community and supporting community is fundamentally embedded in the share, shared values mm -hmm. of, uh, of UMBC. And so I think in that sense, and it's one of the reasons, it's very natural for us to think not only about our community, but the communities that lie, what we traditionally think is outside our university, um, but more importantly, how we can extend our own UMBC community um, to other communities that surround us both locally and within the state and possibly globally as well. So universities right now are facing a time of tough budgets um, and a lot of pressure to prepare students for jobs. Um, so with those pressures in mind, how does preparing students to also be social change agents fit into your vision of higher education? Well, I think it, um, again, many reasons, but I think the most fundamental reason is uh, something I think you mentioned a little bit earlier, which is that um, we are fundamentally at our core a liberal arts institution and committed to liberal education. And of course, the fundamental aspect of liberal, edu liberal education is the preparation <laughs> of citizens, for citizenship. And it's very difficult for me to imagine that in the world we live in today, and the types of employment and jobs, whatever our graduates would do, that an important understanding uh, of the dynamics of social change, the experiences of our com community, both local and globally, um, that that would not have an incredibly important impact on the ability of our students to, uh, to act as, as full citizens, not only of uh, 
the United States or our state, but the world. Well, you're completely right in saying that we are a liberal arts school, but at the same time, we also are very proud of our uh, history, really, as a public research university mm -hmm. and the uh, kind of importance we place on our STEM programs and our STEM education. Uh, you know, you were a physicist before you were a provost, and what connections do you see between breaking ground as provost and STEM education at UMBC? Well, I'll, I'll step back a little bit from your question. and maybe ask the more general question, which would apply um, to STEM education or student in STEM fields or arts, humanities, social sciences, whatever it was. Uh, and I'll try and explain it this way. Um, normally when we talk about the mission of universities or a mission of a research university, um, we typically talk about um, its mission in research, which is the advancement of scholarship, discovery of new knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then we might talk about education, which is about teaching which can be at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. And we think of these as the, as the two missions of a university. And then sometimes, if we remember, we also say um, education, research, and civic engagement is typically the word that's used. And I think as you understand, and, and many of our students and our faculty understand, um, in fact, what we've traditionally called civic engagement or community engagement is fundamentally entwined with the missions of our university, both in education and research. And so the frontier of research, or many of the frontiers of research, lie in what we refer to as engaged scholarship, which is uh, we pursue our scholarship through our interactions and support of our communities, whether it be being agents of social change, um, whether it be um, um, thinking about justice, or whether it be thinking about uh, how water runs off in urban neighborhoods and into the poorer uh, sections of our community. Um, so, so the concept of engaged scholarship is fundamentally embedded in our research mission as a university. Um, but it's also, of course, entwined around our educational mission, as I referred to a little bit earlier, that our own students must have those types of experiences um, not as separate from their education or their courses, but um, embedded within it um, because of the importance of understanding um, this type of engagement, of understanding our communities for their education as a citizen. So I think oftentimes as students, it becomes easy to think about UMBC only within the context of our four years here. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously as provost, your job is to think much more long term. So could you tell us where do you see UMBC five, ten years from now? Well, um, first of all, let me give you the background of where we are. And I, <laughs> but let me summarize a little bit about what I think um, where we are, which is what is so exciting. Um, we've worked very, very hard. Our community has worked very, very hard to establish what we do today, the quality of what we do, and our national reputation. And so the sort of position we are in right now is we're sort of standing on a threshold of the great opportunity that's been built on all that hard work. So not to answer your question directly, and I'll get to that in a moment, um, but this is an incredibly exciting time. It's an exciting time for our community, and it's an exciting time for me to be provost and to serve that community, but also to work with our community to think about um, the, the future of our community moving forward. Um, there's no doubt um, that we will continue to enhance our reputation in the field of undergraduate and in graduate education. That's a reputation that we've earned over many years. It's very important to us. And of course, it's absolutely the right thing to do as a university. A fundamental part of your mission is the education of your students. Um, we have outstanding research and scholarship on that campus. But um, in terms of looking to the future, and I'm really reflecting the views of the community rather than myself, um, I think we certainly hope that, that we can go to the next level in research. But to do that, of course, what we have to do is define for ourselves what um, that next level is. 
And it's very important, I think, for everyone to understand that when I talk about research and getting to the next level, what I'm not talking about is doing research that brings a lot of external funding or grant money <laughs> to the university. Although um, that's a great thing, and we should certainly do that. I'm talking really about excellence. Excellence in scho it's scholarship and discovery. The way that that enhances our university and enhances the experience of our students. So I hope um, over the next five or ten years um, we're going through a that we will be working on the strategic plan, implementing the strategic plan that we're currently developing. We're about halfway through that planning process right now. And that planning process is a, is a very um, consultative and, inclusive, and we hope inclusive process. And uh, what I try to say to people when I talk about strategic plans, which sound very dry, um, is that what we're really doing is creating for ourselves the vision of the community we want to be a part of. And of course, you should understand as students that although that you may be only here for four or five or maybe three years, <laughs> that you are always part of this community. Um, and as I say um, at commencement, that your work here will have actually forever changed our community. So. Well, thank you very, very much for joining us today, You're very Dr. Welcome. Ross. And uh, I'm Ganesh Mysore. I'm Caitlin Leiter-Mason. And thanks for joining us for another session of In The Loop.